Well, it's pretty obvious these are tomatoes and they're important to our research because we use these as a model for fruit ripening. Come on then, Greg, what monster contraption are you showing us here? Monster contraption here. This is a texture analyzer. So this is how we actually measure the texture of a tomato. And it's designed to mimic the uh, consumer test, the squeezy test. So we just put the tomato on this platform. We move the probe down until it's just above the top of the tomato. If you're studying fruit, what we do in science is we use a model. So we try to select something that's relatively easy to study but hopefully that act, the things we find out from it, we can apply to other fruit like mango, bananas, etc. You do have to do it on a case by case basis eventually, but if you have a model, it saves you doing it on a case by case basis. If the same chemistry, the same biology applies to other fruit. And that's often the case. For example, we know the enzymes that cause this little tomato to go soft. Well, the same enzymes are involved in mangoes and similar enzymes in banana. It's got lots of advantages. Working in the UK, we can actually grow tomatoes. We put them in the greenhouse and we get two or three crops a year. Scientifically, they're very well investigated. So, for example, the whole genome has been mapped they're nice and easy to work with as biochemists because there's no nasty inhibitors in there so we can get enzymes out and measure them. And commercially they're actually quite important. Um, they're one of the major fruit crops um, and believe it or not um, they're one of the major sources of nutrients. Let's see it in action. That's it. That's it. So what we've got here is the time naught. That's when the probe hit the surface of the tomato. As it starts to push the tomato, it requires more and more force, more and more force, more and more force. And at this point, it's pushed the tomato, compressed it for four millimeters, and the probe has just come off. So the force has just gone back down to zero. We normally do it to about 10% of the diameter of the fruit. So that fruit's about 40 millimetres, so we do four millimetres. We put the cursor over the top there, press the mouse, and in the corner there, we needed the equivalent of 3.34 kilograms. So what that means is if I had a weight of three and a third kilos, put it on that tomato, it would push it down four millimetres. And is that, did that, did that tomato do well then? Is that a, is that a... That's a nice firm tomato. <laughs> One of the things we're really interested in is trying to stop the fruit going rotten and overripe. We're trying to prevent waste. One thing it can happen is it can lose water. The tomato cells are surrounded by a really tough cell wall. You know, we have a skeleton that keeps us upright. Well, to, Plants have these cell walls. They're really tough. Um, they're made of carbohydrates. And it's the sort of thing these benches are made of. And what happens when a fruit goes soft is that those cell walls get degraded and turned into mushy pulp. What we do is a variety of approaches to stop them going soft. There's the breeding approach, which is you cross different strains of tomato and you select ones that naturally inherit a non-softening trait. But you run the risk there of losing other important traits, like <laughs> flavour. There are plant hormones, and there's one called ethylene, that makes the fruit ripen. So maybe we can stop the production of the ethylene, or we can prevent the tomato seeing the ethylene, and that will extend its life. And finally, if we know the enzymes that are involved, we can use genetic engineering to stop the fruit making them. They all eventually go soft. You can't stop it permanently. Well, not yet, anyway. But we can at least extend the shelf life so that you can keep it in the house for three, four weeks instead of one or two. This machine seems like a lot of fun to me. 
and sometimes obviously students get left alone with this machine. You've got to tell me some stories. What have you seen done? Um, right, well the obvious one is you can adjust this machine to go from four millimetres to any distance you like, including 40 millimetres. And we end up with an exploding tomato. How much money do I have to give you to set it to that? <laughs> I'm not sure I could get this one to explode because it's too, too firm. We can have a go. No, it's struggling. No, overload again. <laughs> That's not supposed to happen, surely. <laughs> it always happens. <laughs> Tomatoes have been part of my life for the last 30 years. I like them. They're really nice. One disadvantage I've come across is I've become sensitised to the pollen. And so I can't go into the greenhouses anymore without dosing myself up with antihistamine.